This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle, Bumper to Bumper, helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio on what my wife refers to as Mother's Day Weekend. I don't know how it grew by a day, but it is Mother's Day Weekend, and she's been reminding me that ever since uh, 12 o'clock last night. We are here at Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio. He is Matt Allen. We are your KTAR car guys, helping you have a better overall car repair experience. If you've got car questions, we've got answers so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also reach us by text at 411-923. Again, 411-923. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we're going to do an email of the week. We're taking your text and phone calls and summer travel and we brought in Dave Denman from Dave's Car Care at 51st Avenue in Peoria to help us help you with your car. Good to have you, Dave. You bet. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Dave, let me clear up. Well, I have two Daves in here, so am I going to have to say Riccio and Denman? Or, it's fine with or, me. Uh, <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but we'll figure that out. I'll point, I guess. Let me clarify that Mother's Day thing for you, Dave. My house, it truly is a Mother's Day weekend because today is Mexican Mother's Day. Mm. So in Mexico, Mother's Day is always the 10th. I hope I don't mess this up. And for us, it's always the second Sunday. So in my house, it truly is a uh, Mother's, Mother's Day, Day weekend. weekend. So for all the Mexican mamas out there, happy Mother's Day. So, And uh, and then all the other mothers. Did uh, you get your Mother's Day stuff taken care of already? Or? Of course not. <laughs> As I nod my head, yes, of course, of course, I have not done anything with that. So uh, I'll be, I know I'll be busy cooking and 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 such. So summertime travel, though. Mm. You know, I was at a kid's birthday party a couple weeks ago, and hearing everybody talking about, oh yeah, we're gonna go to San Diego, we're gonna drive over. We're, I can't wait to go. To this my favorite place on the boardwalk and have a beer, and the kids are gonna go to Legoland, and oh, we're driving up to. Yosemite and another family's doing this, and I said, "Hey, what about your car? Have you thought about that? Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, you're driving your car, right? Well, yeah, you're making all these plans. You know everything you're doing, but the last thing you've worried about is the car, the vehicle that is going to make I, this vacation happen." I can tell you, uh, and Dave's not his head when they're going to make worry about the car, and that's the day, the Friday before they leave for Memorial Day, because that's the one I'm thinking of. That's two weeks out. And that, you know, that's after the car's packed, the kids are in, and they come in and want you to wire up the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot that minor detail, let alone if the car will even stop or go with the trailer hooked up, right? Well, we all love to go to San Diego for, for the weekend or for the week. And last I checked, I had to tow a car in from Blythe, one of, my, one of the nicest places you can go this time of year, and it was $700 tow bill. And that happens every summer. We're towing cars in from Blythe. That weren't Blythe. Do you get it fixed in Blythe? Probably not. You can tow it back. Yeah, you probably, probably don't want to. But the other thing is, it, it's yeah, the tow, but that can happen. You can bring your car in. We can check it out. And we just can't predict everything. You can Like a light bulb is going to burn out. You never know. You can have an alternator uh, go bad on you or some kind of module. You just can never predict everything. But you can certainly take care of making sure the tires are in good shape and they're safe, making sure that the spare tire has air in it and that all the tools to change it are in the car. There's no fluid leaks. And all that needs to be done, you know, Dave, you say, Dave Riccio, you say a couple weeks out. I say well, you don't want to be picking up your car from the shop prior to a trip any less than three to five days. Just, I mean... Denman, it, it can happen, right? I mean, well, there's, there's, yeah, I, I think if we look at the department, the the roadway department, uh, as we head west to San Diego, and we're climbing out over the mountain there, uh, they realize that people don't maintain cooling systems because what do they have? A water resource for overheating cars yeah. all the way up the mountain. So, you know, but the one thing you can do, if, if you find that quality shop, you have that relationship, and they're maintaining your vehicle, on an ongoing basis, you can feel pretty safe, but yet we all get the customers that trust us. Hey, guys, taking a family over, just make sure I'm safe. 
Mm-hmm. Well, and that and that brings up a whole nother idea. Dave Riccio, you had somebody in your shop the other day talking. That they have a transmission problem. Yeah, there's something there, but can't quite pin it. The last thing you want to do is make a repair on that car, and then you don't know. It, it's just Murphy's Law will kick in no matter she what. She was driving to California. That was this last week, driving to California for the weekend to see a wedding. Two-day trip. And she's been having this transmission thing going on for like three years. And, well, I kind of think I want to take care of it now. We're driving it. We didn't really feel any big issues. It wasn't working quite perfect. But she said, go ahead and service it. No, I don't want to service it. it this van, Toyota Sienna, had 180,000 miles on it. And we had a questionable transmission. And doing a service before we headed out of town, I'm not doing it. So I convinced her, if you're nervous about this car, because she said, I just want to feel safe going to California. I said, well, it's time you run a car. We'll go ahead and service the transmission, but you need to run a car for two days. You're going to be out 80 bucks. And well, that rental car may be nicer than her Sienna. Well, that, that's what I was going to say. The last time I rented a car, it's nicer than my car. It's got all the greatest bells and whistles. It's got the Bluetooth. It's got the GPS. So maybe you're going to San Diego or L.A. or it doesn't matter, Colorado, wherever you go on your vacation. You don't know your way around. Maybe your 2002 or three car that is a perfectly good car around town. Maybe it's just you get something a little bigger. Maybe you rent the Toyota Sienna minivan instead of having the four-door car that's maxed out now. And then it puts you in a whole other comfort zone. You don't have to worry about it. They're usually a brand-new car. Well, that's true. And, you know, if you haven't maintained your vehicle and your car does have that 185,000 miles on it, the comfort is the two days and the rental car that you know you're not going to have a problem. It's going to be fun, right? You did mention a $700 tow bill earlier. Yes, but more importantly, how about your safety of your family, the loved ones, while you're sitting on the side of the road at 121 degrees in the desert? It makes $700 look like nothing, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's, and you don't want to be that guy. You, th- you, you think something can go haywire and, and, uh, and here can be the guy everybody's looking at and not happy with. You wait till the car breaks down. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be the re- on the receiving end of that from uh, from my wife, that's for sure. So all three of us have been in the business. You've been doing this 20 years. You've been doing uh, this every 35 years, 40 years. 34. 34 years. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this 20 years that I can remember, and people, it never fails. They show up a day before they're headed out of town and want an oil change. And I get that they want an oil change because they know, hey, you guys kind of do a basic inspection when I'm getting an oil change, so that's what I want. You don't have to get an oil change. You can get a basic inspection before you head out of town. But really don't wait till the last minute because if there is a problem and they say, well, your water pump's leaking and seeping out, that might be tax going up those hills going to California. Let's put a water pump in there. Well, you know. You just never. You've got the, now you've added another human element, the mechanical mechanics of the car. Again, I just say Murphy likes to work overtime in these situations. He does. He will show up. Well, the parts we put on have a 2% failure rate out of the box. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, another thing that happens is you show up under that deadline that, it, you know, that you are chasing, trying to get out of town, and then you bring the repair shop, the car, give him six hours, and an empty gas tank. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it, it sounds it, bitter. It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not bad. So what What can, if, if you're headed out of town and you're not going to the shop, maybe you've got a car with only 30,000, 40,000 miles on it. it not every car needs to go have a look over before it goes goes out of town, but that is the importance. I mean, heck, even in town, going up uh, to Munns Park, that to me is in town, towing the boat out to the lake. There's all these situations that we're going to put ourselves in. Uh, so checking the tires, I mean, visual inspection, you can use a coin, use a quarter to measure the tread depth, but we want to have at least three thirty 30 seconds of tread depth. That's minimum. They're trash at three thirty seconds. Got to have some good tires. Make sure the fluids are full. You want to make sure stupid things, the windshield wipers. Yeah, it's not going to rain, but you want to wipe the windows. Make sure the windshield washer fluid is full. Make sure the battery's working okay and it's clean and secure. At least just the basics. When we come back, we're taking your calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You're listening to Matt and Dave, and in with us today is Dave Denman from Dave's Car Care at 51st Avenue in Peoria. We'll be right back. 
After 14 years in the States, mostly spent here in the Valley, I was getting bloody frustrated with the treatment I was receiving from dealerships on the maintenance and repairs of my vehicles. I finally reached out to a friend who told me I was crazy not to try Virginia Auto Service. Being a mom with a busy schedule, children and work, I took my friend's advice and gave Virginia a try. What a refreshing difference. From the first step through their doors, their staff was accommodating and understanding. Robert explained in plain English what I needed to have done, but also why. They went out of their way to make sure that the experience was convenient with door-to-door -door shuttle service by a lovely man named Bergy. Several years and a number of visits later, the experience is always the same. They tell me what is necessary right now and what is not. This is Victoria, and I don't know much about cars, but I do know that from boot to bonnet, Virginia Auto Service knows how to take care of their customers. Check them out online at virginiaautoservice.com. Swain Palm Trees, poolside margaritas, and lush championship golf. Don't waste all your precious time, gas, and money trying to cram a three-day road trip into your Memorial Day this year. Come stay and play with us at the third annual Bunker to Bunker Memorial Day Stay and Play Weekend at the historic Wigwam Resort. Hi, this is Jerry Colangelo inviting you to be my guest for the ultimate in-town luxury golf and tropical family getaway at an incredible value. Bunker to Bunker's two-person scramble is on the world-renowned gold course filled with prizes, awards, and lunch. It even includes a free bounce-back coupon for a second round of golf, all for just $79. Better yet, bring your buddies or the whole family and enjoy the entire weekend with a two-night stay that includes the tournament for just $299. And once again, proceeds benefit the Phoenix Children's Hospital. Don't miss out. So register today at wigwamgolf.com forward slash Bunkerville 2014 and tell them Jerry sent you. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. He is Matt Allen. And we've got Brianna mixing up the music for us, which we appreciate. And we've got Dave Denman from Dave's Car Care at 51st Avenue in Peoria here to help us help you with your car. And we're also taking your phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. And I've got some text rolling in at 411923, but we definitely got some open lines. So if you've got questions, if you're getting ready to head out on the road, if you want to talk about anything in regards to your car, we're here to help. And I've got something pretty exciting that happened with Dave Denman yesterday. Fill us in, Matt. Well, besides just the fact that we like Dave and he's one of the great bumper-to-bumper -bumper radio shops, uh, pretty exciting, and we're very happy and uh, honored that he's here with us today. Dave was the winner of the 2014 Better Business Bureau Ethics Award, and I was uh, privileged enough to be at the award ceremony at the Biltmore the other night, and uh, it was great, Dave. A lot of uh, a lot of big, you know, there's different categories of uh, of businesses as far as the size of the business, but. Uh, Mr. Denman and Dave's car care team brought home the hardware. This is a big deal. A lot of guys apply for this year after year after year and never make it. And this is the first time you filled out the application in the 35 years you've been in business, and, and, and you win. Well, uh, and that's in a tribute to the team that we've assembled and works for us. But I, I, I believe that the crowning achievement of this is our service to the community and our involvement with the homeless that we've been doing for 10 years with an organization that I founded called Sunny Slope Ministers of Hope. And, uh, in fact, uh, you know, it's just a great uh, way to give back. You can't always keep taking without giving back. Sunny Slope Ministers of Hope, this is a neat deal. I've gone out, and Dave has a picnic one Sunday a month. Uh, the last Sunday of every month. Yeah. Last Sunday of every month, feeds the homeless uh, there at a park in Sunny Slope, and uh, it's humbling to go do it. It absolutely is, especially with the devastation of our economy, as long as it's take to come back. You know, we started this getting men, then we started getting men and women, and now we're seeing families with children. So, uh, it, But it's a great time. It's a good thing that we do. Uh, we lift people's spirits for about four or five hours, but we give them a home-cooked meal. It's awesome. Well, before the show, Matt asked Dave, what does ethics mean to you? And Dave's answer was, do unto others as you would have them do to you. Don't know anybody that wants to be cheated. No one wants to be cheated. Nobody wants to be cheated. No businessman, no no consumer, no child. You know, it's all it's all about the integrity, the motivation, what you're doing, 
We're not fixing cars. We're serving people. In the people business. That's right. You know, one of the things that they said, one of the, I was, they had a great keynote speaker the other night, and even, and I, and I don't know who the other person was talking before the keynote speaker, and I, I was feverishly, people probably thought I was looking at my phone and screwing around on Facebook or something. I was using the notepad on my phone. I was trying to write down some of the things that they were talking about with ethics and what it means. But one thing that stood out to me when they were talking about the Better Business Bureau and the ethics and making a fair marketplace for both the consumer and, in our case, the repair shop. Because this is a two-way street. We're in business. as all the bumper-to-bumper shops. We're all just good people. We own a repair shop. Most of us started off being mechanics and, and evolved into to this ownership role. But we're here to take care of people and, and, and provide a service. And there are some of those consumers out there that are prof- I call them professional consumers. Professional but. consumers, yeah. It definitely it definitely goes both ways. And, and honestly, I deal with the public every day, and for the most part, I enjoy every last one of them. There is a small percentage of you know <laughs> I'd rather not work on their car. We won't talk about them, but uh, but yeah. I think it's important to talk about them because the consumer should realize that this is a relationship. It's not a game to game one side or the other. It's about being fair. Well, if someone's getting the short end of the stick, it isn't a good business transaction. And I hear people talking about, oh, I got this and I got that and this happened and that happened. Well, it sounds like you gave the business the short end of the stick. I sure did. You know, that's not necessarily what any of us wants. You want to walk away, know you've been treated fairly, and that should go both ways. Some people don't believe in a win-win. I do. Well, also, the consumer has to understand that if we are profitable, serving our community, how many of the independent businessmen in the valley that come together, whether it be the plumbers or the electrician or the air-conditioned people supporting uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital. You know, So we are winning. We are winning by giving back and just about being fair in our ethics and our practices to each other and honoring you know, our humanity. Exactly. And if you want to get a sampling of, of that, the Dave Shop, 51st Avenue in Peoria on the northwest corner, been there for 35 years. The place is a beautiful facility, got all the great equipment. So you'll find Dave at 51st Avenue in Peoria. You'll find all the other shops at bumpertobumperradio.com. And we've got some open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Well, up first this segment, let's take a trip to Surprise on a Suzuki XL7 2009. Looks like we got Holly. What can we do for you today, Holly? Hi. I hope you can help me to stop being shocked. Okay. We'll give it a <laughs> shot. Every time I do, I get shocked by my car. Oh, okay. <laughs> every time I get out of it, I touch it. I can touch anything. Just the metal. I can touch the little the screw that's in the door hatch, whatever, I touch it with my key, I get shocked. And it's not a little, like, I'll make arc. <laughs> How do I stop this? Somebody told me about some kind of strap that you could have that would drag on the ground, but I don't find them in the auto parts stores. So Yeah, you know, I, I've i had cars occasionally where I'm, I'm, I get shocked like that, too, the static cling. And I don't know if that's necessarily anything to do with the car or if it's – it might be the clothes you're wearing, the way you slide in and off the seat. Because I know at times I get zapped in my car, too. Holly's got an electrifying personality is what I'm feeling. <laughs> I believe that, too. <laughs> I think there are some anti-static type sprays that you can probably spray in the interior. I don't know if it's the interior that's doing it. Well, that's what I was thinking, like your laundry, your static cling you, yeah. know, you use on the blouse or whatever. I th- possibly some of that, but I don't think there's a – a ground strap or or anything like that. I know at the gas. Because isn't it grounded by the tires, right? No, it's it's no? maybe in the case of lightning, it is, or it's oh, insulated. Okay. Uh, Dave, well, well, and where did you hear that recommendation from, Holly? Oh my gosh, you just hear everybody. <laughs> yeah. You well, talk to anybody. Heard and it on the careful. internet. <laughs> uh, I think I think Matt gave you a, a a perfect example of trying something one thing at a time to see if you could do it. And I'd start with the anti-static, uh, maybe yeah, a dryer rubber, you know, sheet or something like that. But only do one thing and try it to see what it is that eliminates it. Thank- so you guys don't think that it's the car? I, I, I kind of doubt it because, no, okay. I, I really don't think so. Try some static cling stuff, some of the spray, see what happens. But it'd be send us an email and, and, uh, 
and let us know or, or call in again. I'm curious to see how that finds out or if it goes away with some humidity, too. I think the really dry air is conducive. Well, let's, I'm going to go with a text, and it looks like there was a lot of autocorrect in this one, so bear with me. But 2001 Ford Expedition, 5.4 liter, it doesn't say the mileage, but the vehicle's 13 years old, so I'm going to suggest maybe it's got 150,000 miles on it. During the summer months, lacks power. There's no codes, no check engine lights on, but it just doesn't feel like it's got the oomph. Oomph. Dave, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, fuel filter, catalytic converter, but I believe the text said that they'd had the converter checked, correctly? Converter was checked. Well, now that's open for interpretation, checked. Was it checked with a pressure gauge? Was it, you know, is it the original OE converter and... You know, just because you had it checked on flat ground with no power put to it, it still could be coming apart internally, you know. Well, the thing I know about summertime, the car is not as efficient. The engine just isn't. Combustion isn't as good. The other thing that happens is your fan clutch, which is at the front of the engine, driven off the belt, is pulling a lot more air because of the higher temperatures. And that tends to rob some horsepower and give you that feel. What comes to your mind now? Uh, the music is coming to my mind. <laughs> it's coming to my ears. Uh, fan clutch could be an issue if it's engaging too soon. A uh, number of different things. You just gotta. Maybe we can talk about it more after the break. Hi, this is Greg Lafonsi of Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. Yes, we realize this is a long name to remember, but most of our customers know us simply as ADS. ADS is a family-owned and operated state-of-the-art, full-service automotive repair facility with an expert staff that has helped us earn the coveted AAA Top Shop Award as one of the best shops in the nation for the second straight year in a row. We are honored, humbled, and dedicated to providing the same level of service to you and your family. We will always strive to get it done right the first time so that you'll leave with a smile on your face after every repair or service. ADS is a bumper-to-bumper radio-approved shop with a long name but a short, simple goal. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority, and everything else takes care of itself. Just east of I-10 on Chandler Boulevard, ADS proudly serves Ahwatukee, Chandler, Tempe, Gilbert, and Southeast Phoenix. Stop by or check us out at AutomotiveDiagnosticSpecialties.com today. It's the little old lady from Pasadena. All righty, a little old lady from Pasadena. Hopefully she's having a happy Mother's Day weekend, right, Dave? <laughs> Mother's Day weekend, according to my wife. That's right. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, Dave Riccio, and we've got Dave Denman, the steward, he calls himself, of Dave's Car Care at 51st Avenue in Peoria. And he's here today with a little celebration with us after winning the 2014 Better Business Bureau Ethics Award. So, Dave, congratulations again, and thanks for coming today. And I think we've got a couple phone calls we need to get to right away. All right. We are going to go with Stephanie in Maricopa on a 2008 Kia Rio. Go ahead, Stephanie. You are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. What can we do for you? Hi. Um, We are having this strange problem with our car that uh, it only occurs when we fill up the gas all the way to the top. You know, we fill the fill the tank. It never happens when we fill it up halfway or three quarters of the way. Just when it goes, it's completely full. And what happens? It's a it's a standard, so we have this stick shift, you know. And um, <clears throat> when we fill up the gas tank, and then we go to turn on the car, it will turn on, but it it like stops right away. And the only way that we can get it to drive is if we're ready to go, we have the clutch in, and we just hit the gas right away. And it's a little bit dangerous because, you know, we're in a gas station, and it's just kind of dangerous. So I was wondering if you have any idea of what's going on with my car. Sure. Stephanie, when you're filling the tank, do you top off, or do you just let it stop when it stops? No, we, it just stops when it, it stops. stops. when it stops. Okay. Well, that's good. I don't think it would have made a difference too much, but <laughs> if people are in the habit of doing that, it can cause other problems down the road, so we don't want to be topping off. Okay. It sounds like to me when you're filling the tank, 
There must be something happening with one of the emissions control vent solenoids or the charcoal canister, which is supposed to take care of the vapors in the car. There could be a broken diaphragm or something in one of those control devices that's allowing the car just to suck raw fuel into the engine. And that's what I'm thinking. When the tank is full, it gets that extra drink of fuel, if you will, mm. and the car is flooding out. That's my my best guess now because it's got to be to do something with the extra fuel in the car. Do we have any check engine lights that come on? Yeah, I, you know, we don't know. Stephanie, do you have a, a check engine light on, on the car? Um, it comes on periodically. Okay. Um, but, it, I'm, but it's been, I mean, it's honestly, it's just been on and off since we've owned the car. Right. And I haven't really noticed it in relation to this recent problem. Okay. okay. Well, and, and we do need to get the check engine light fixed, but based off the way you're describing this, it may not have anything to do. So I don't, I don't want to say the check engine light at this point. Until we knew what that uh, fault code was, we don't know if it's got anything to do with the problem. So, And for those listening... Basically, your car is designed that when you, you know, that the gas vapors off the top of the the gas in the tank are designed not to go out into the atmosphere. So they're captured by your fuel system or your charcoal canister, and at the right time, it reintroduces those vapors into the engine. And so something may not be venting right, where it's just pouring all that vapor into the engine. Or raw fuel. I'm thinking raw fuel. It's taking raw fuel right off the top. Okay, right off the top. And if you have questions about your car, you can always give us a call at 602. 277-5827. Two seven seven five eight two seven. We do texting if you're shy, but I don't think you should be shy. I think you should call. But if you do want to text, it's four one one nine two three. We've got a ton of text in regard to the static problem and the shocking car and the shocking personality. Uh, someone suggested putting a uh, bounce fabric sheet can help with the static on the seats. I don't know. Maybe you can give that a try. Spray a bottle full of water and an ounce or two of downy sprayed on the seats will take care of the static problem. So maybe try that out. See yeah, what happens. I, I know I can't I can't I never really keep track, obviously, but I do know that I do have that static clean issue intermittently in my car and and I think it, there's another text here talking about the dry weather. And I really think Definitely. I walk through Costco. And I don't know if it's the rubber wheels and the way the floors. Man, that the, those shopping carts put out some voltage. Like it, <laughs> that's get true. Shocked, so, well, this is ironic, but we've got Dave from Peoria, where Dave's from, uh, on a 1999 <laughs> Ford Expedition. Dave, what can we help you with today? Hey guys, how you doing today? Enjoy the show. Good. Thanks. Hey, uh, I got a 99 Ford Expedition with the 4R100 transmission. Lately, I'm having some issues when I'm shifting it from park. Down into drive neutral. It's not going into the gear. I got to fiddle with the selector, the lever, to get it into the correct gear. And then also, when I put the vehicle up into park, uh, sometimes it's not fully go- engaging in the park. Would that be an internal transmission issue, or would that be a outside linkage slash bushing? That problem? is that is one of my favorite repairs at the tranny shop because everybody comes in and they they're like, oh, I'm buying a tranny. And they come in, and, and exactly what it is, there's a cable that runs from your steering column down through the firewall, makes a turn, and comes back to the side, left side of the transmission. And there's a couple of screws right under there at the firewall that come loose. And you'll get exactly that. You can't get it all the way in the park. It doesn't seem like it wants to go in reverse. Nothing lines up. Nothing seems to work. It literally is a is a 15-minute repair for a shop. So for 100 expedition it's going to last a long time well this guy sounds like he knows what he's talking about a little bit or he tricked us because he knew he had a 4r100 he mm-hmm. talked about it. so <laughs> if he's going to do that himself dave is there i can kind of picture that because you see the same thing with clutch cables coming through the firewall or the speed on cable it's maybe like a uh uh oh, i don't know a, a oval shaped uh a plate where the cable runs through with a couple screws, top and bottom, right? I believe that. It's been a while since I got upside down and got underneath the dashboard. So hopefully you're able, real flexible. <laughs> it takes a really flexible mechanic. To so you, it's under the dash, not under the Correct. It is under the, the dash. So okay. you'll just, you're going to find the main cable that goes from the steering column down through the firewall, and that's going to be it. And that is, it's so common. I don't really see it that much anymore, but I, you know, they always come it in and they're like, be. oh, it's got to be bad, you know? Well, I know when I had tow trucks, we had the Chevy 3500 
and yeah, the, after a while, the shifters were just sloppy. The arm is bouncing around. It doesn't feel like a positive engagement into gears. And, and it wasn't a loose cable issue. We used to keep a shifter assembly in a, in a cable there, and you put that on, and it just... You know, it's just like a new one again. It just shifted nicely. So. I, I don't want to get on my on my vent, but I'm going to. This is where oh, you take your car. Go. This is where you take your car to the sh- the transmission shop, the one that's a little shady. Uh, they don't sound shady. They sound pretty good because they're good at what they do. You know, what does a snake oil salesman look like? You can't really tell the difference. They all look the same. But he says, well, we're gonna have to pull your transmission out of your car to find out what's wrong with it. And you can pull any transmission down with some miles on it and find something wrong with it, of course. But really, don't go to that expense. A lot of these repairs are fixed in the car. They're not a big deal. They're not full of drama. But if you're the wrong place, they're going to make it full of drama. So do your research before you go to a transmission shop. 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. We're going to go with Eric in Phoenix. Uh, Go ahead, Eric. What can we help you with today? Hi, uh, glad to talk with you. Um, I drive on a Cord 2002. Uh, the question, uh, I believe, is just basically a simpler situation. Uh, but I, are you hearing me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. We're we're ready. Uh, but I I have a question that says uh, I'm. Wondering if it's uh, connected somehow to the um, display, the warning lights. Eric, what kind of problem are you having with the car? I'm not quite understanding the question yet. Well, the the question really though is that the odometer uh, doesn't light up, so I don't really know how many miles I've traveled or whatever, uh, especially at night. Um, so. So is that a digital dash in the car? Is there an LCD display, or does it have the standard uh, odometer where where the the numbers are just rolling over on dials? Um, I believe it's a standard uh, rolling over. Okay. So, uh, but, but the uh, the the uh, odometer light actually has been out for a long long while. Okay. Uh, a few years, so I'm wondering. Is there something that can be replaced, or do I need to... Yeah, absolutely. Here's what you need to do. The first thing that I'd like you to try, because I'm not clear if all the lights on the dash are not working, on the instrument cluster, I'll call it, just make sure there's a dial, a rheostat over on the left side of the dash, and make sure that that is turned up all the way. It's the dimmer, but it can also turn the lights all the way off. So let's make sure that if all the lights are out on the dash, let's make sure that that's turned up and that, and that they're working. Now, if they don't, even after you've turned that up, I believe there's a 7.5 amp fuse for the dash lights. It's probably the only 7.5 amp fuse you'll find in the fuse box. You could check that. Now, if it has just... Do you recall where the fuse box is for him, Matt? Uh, yeah, that I don't. There's an under-hood fuse box in that car, and there's probably an under-the-dash one. So yeah. I don't know, but you'd you'd have to refer to the owner's manual. But secondary to that, now, if the other lights are working on the dash, and there's just one single area of the dash that's burned out, typically what will happen is the technician will remove that instrument cluster, and we can replace those uh replace those light bulbs. Not typically that big of a deal, unless maybe there's something wrong with the cluster itself, but even then, it's not a big deal to solve. Thanks so much for the call, Eric. I got a text here. Uh, They are moving to Prescott, and they're looking for a good recommendation on a great shop. You know, bumper-to-bumper radio is mostly around the valley, but Matt and I pretty much know people around the state. I would recommend, there's a there's a shop called Certified Transmission. They do general repair also, but they're in Prescott if you're looking for a great shop. And if you're here in the Valley, BumperToBumperRadio.com. And one of the things we get from BumperToBumperRadio.com is emails from listeners. In an email this week, I have a 1999 Lexus GS300 with 77,000 miles on it. I have never changed any fluids other than the oil in the last 15 years since I've had the car. What do you recommend and my response to this was, shame on you, Ron. <laughs> so, actually, this is a pretty true story. I mean, these cars, they run good. You think, they just, just put oil in them, and they're good. Oil and gas, and they're good to go. Uh, but there is some rule of thumb intervals that I like to see. Oil changes every three to 5,000 miles. I personally change my oil every 5,000 miles, but I use synthetic. 
a minimum of twice a year, but there's a whole lot of other foods that need to be addressed. So I use transmission service every 24 to 36,000 miles. Just as a rule of thumb, that may be heavier than your owner's manual recommends because you can always go there, but sometimes the manual is too heavy and sometimes I find it to be too light. So you're going to want to go to people that have experience with repairs. What kind of repairs are you seeing and where do you see that I need to spend the maintenance? Differential services every 30 to 50,000 miles, coolant every 24 to 36,000 miles, and uh, transfer cases. We can't forget those every 30 to 50,000 miles. Well, and that, and, and I was going to bring it up when you talked about differential because I wasn't sure you were going to get to transfer case. But when I talk to people about transfer case service at my shop, sometimes oh, I never use my phone. Never drive. use it. <laughs> well, I don't. You you typically. First off, you don't have to use your four-wheel drive to use the transfer case. The transfer case is still always being used even around town. Now, if you have an all-wheel drive car, that transfer case, and, and, and most four-wheel drives never see the dirt, an all-wheel drive car driving in the city, boy, that gets some abuse because that transfer case is is, is change, transferring power to the front of the car, to the rear car, depending on what the all-wheel drive strategy is, and you can really burn up some transfer case fluid on an all-wheel drive sedan. Well, well, not only that, though, you know, if you think about our aviation industry, regardless of the condition of anything, they're on a safety schedule, and they flush, they replace. So it's not really about flushing your wallet. The much of it is is maintaining the integrity of your car and the reliability of it. We've got Jeremy and Steve, and we're going to take a couple texts. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. <laughs> It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. We're celebrating, and for good reason. Yep, 2014 marks the 20th anniversary of Keiko Roofing here in the Valley. And they're proud and humbled to have been trusted for all these years by you, their loyal customers. Year after year, Keiko has over 50% of their business coming from referrals or repeat customers. And 98% of the customers continue to say they would refer Keiko to a friend or family member. For that loyalty and trust... We all want to say thank you. Keiko is proud to install peace of mind by using only the finest materials with their most skilled workers, all backed by the industry's best owner's pride guarantee. If the roof on your home or business is over 10 years old, call Keiko for a free checkup and financing options. 602-944-4600 or go to keikoroofing.com. They're crazy about quality. Hi. This is Greg LaFonsi of Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. Long name, right? But we have a short, simple goal. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority, and everything else takes care of itself. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved. ADS is a family-owned and operated state-of-the-art repair facility that has an expert staff that for the second straight year has earned the coveted AAA Top Shop Award as one of the best shops in the nation. Just east of I-10 on Channel Boulevard. Find us at AutomotiveDiagnosticSpecialties.com. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen. He is Dave Riccio. And this other guy over here texting and looking at his cell phone is Dave Denman from Dave's Car Care, one of the Bumper to Bumper Radio shops, in having a visit with us and helping us out today. And before we go any further, again, in this segment, again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out Mother's there. Mother's Day weekend. Mother's Day weekend, the Mexican Mother's Day today, and a Mother's Day tomorrow. So a whole weekend of taking care of mama. I had Matt's shop teacher from high school in my shop this week, and I was really digging on him for some dirt on Matt. I said, come on, what did Matt do? And he said, you know what, Dave? He was quiet. He just sat in the back corner. And the thing I know about Matt is Matt's mischievous, so even if he's quiet, <laughs> there's something going wrong. I said, did you ever get hit in the back of the neck with a spit wad or anything? Because that was Matt. Well, that's what I'm always <laughs> nervous at my house. When the kids are carrying on and making all this racket and, and you know really irritating you, that's a good thing. But when it's silent, I'm on the lookout now. I'm going, what? <laughs> what the heck is going on? Yeah, Bob Halt, he was my, my teacher. I had him at Shea Middle School. 
And we used to walk to Shadow Mountain next door to go to plastics and woods class or whatever it was that he was teaching. And I had him up through uh, shop class at uh, in, at uh, Shadow Mountain. And one of my best technician, uh, ooh, I don't know if I should have said that. I don't know what the other guys are thinking. Now. What's his name, please? <laughs> so my best tech I found from Mr. Hall. I hired him when he was still in high school and 16 years later uh, still with me. It's just funny that, that we had the same shop teacher, different high school, 10 years later. So. And Matt, is that program still at Shadow Mountain? Well, uh, no, it's not. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that could take a whole other show and, and stuff that this industry really needs. It needs some, some technicians. It needs people to believe that this is a good business for their son or daughter to be in. Well, during the break, Matt was grilling me over my feedback on cars lacking power in the summertime. But I'll have you know that I got an A in auto shop in high school, and I think he got a C. So... <laughs> I think we need to talk about this some more. We're going to go with Jeremy in Phoenix. It looks like he's got a 2000 Toyota 4Runner. Go ahead, Jeremy. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, hey, guys. Hey, I went to Shane's out of Mountain, too. So, hey, right. alumni. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I picked up the 2000 4Runner uh, a couple weeks ago. I love it. This is an awesome little truck. Um, the problem I'm having is it doesn't shift in and out of four-wheel drive. Um, I, I, I found the vacuum lines where, where they go to the front axle out, off of the actuator, and I swapped them so that so the front axle is not locked in. But running it normally, it's locked in, and it won't turn off. does okay. not have locking hubs, but there's an actuator on the front axle. How do you know that it's not turning off? Um, by switching, by, by pulling the two vacuum lines off and reversing them, it... it um, Unactuates, it disengages. Okay, so you so you can manipulate the control to get the four wheel drive to disengage. Right, right. Okay, okay, so you can make it happen. So it sounds like this is more in Dave's wheelhouse, but it sounds like the axles and the parts inside the front axle, the engagement of the hubs, that's all working. It sounds like we have a control, control issue because you're manipulating it. And I don't really know. There's going to be, generally, there's a, a vacuum switch on the transfer case, and all the manufacturers do it a little different. Some manufacturers don't disconnect the front axle, so it's always spinning the front axle. Some do. And so I've seen vacuum control. There's electric controlled. I don't really specifically know how that system works, but it's always a fun gotcha. fun one to yeah. diagnose. It's, it's, it's pretty uh, pretty innovative. There's, I think, three or four different actuators, and, I mean, it's it's all over the place. Yeah. So. It, go ahead, Dave. Well, Evan. it shouldn't be that difficult to diagnose if you've got a smoke machine. You can check your vacuum on the mod themselves. You know, you should get out of that relatively inexpensive. I, I look at that as it's just like a wiring problem. Yeah. We, we need to get a chart. We're going to go into our manual. That's what the technician's going to do. When I go on a trip, I'm going to look at the map. I want to know where I'm going. Same thing on the on a wiring problem or with this electrical or with this vacuum, potential vacuum problem. We're going to look at a diagram that's going to show us all the lines, where the switches are. Those are like the, the interchanges and the on-ramps and the stop lights and stuff. We're going to find those, and we just need to trace back. And, and maybe we have a broken vacuum line. Maybe we've got a vacuum switch that's not working. Maybe we've got an electronic solenoid that allows vacuum to pass that's not working. So it could be a number of different things. So you're just going to look at it? Or are you going to charge to look? Well, of course. I mean, that's the diagnostic process, yeah, when it comes in the shop. And, and something like that, you know, since you brought up the price, Dave, I would imagine that for a technician to take a look at that, dig into the book, and, and do some probing, you're going to spend 100, 100, 150 bucks maybe going through that. That might even include the fix, or then we might find out that we need parts. Hey, Jeremy, you can also send us an email at bumper to bumper radio dot com, and uh, when I have a little more time and diagram in front of me, I can help you out a little better with that. So we're going to sneak in Steve in Apache Junction on a 2007 Toyota Tundra. Go ahead, Steve. You're on bumper to bumper radio. Hi, guys. Love your show. Thank you. Uh, I, I stopped my truck yesterday, and I went in, and I came in to get back in it, and I went to turn the key, and the key would not turn. <laughs> wouldn't turn left, wouldn't turn right, wouldn't do nothing. Uh, so I called my mechanic, and he said sometimes just jiggle the steering wheel and move it and take the key in and out and keep doing it, and it will probably come loose. Uh, and I, it did, it took about 10 minutes, but it did, finally I kept jiggling it and it did start. So when I came back home, I called Toyota and they said I probably just parked on a little hill and had the steering wheel 
turn just right or something, but they said that is not a problem. I was just wondering if that lock needs to be replaced or is it just a one-time thing? Steve, do you have your keys in front of you right now? Yes. Take a look at that key. Is it is it chrome or can you see the brass worn off and it's a and it's a gold color and are those uh, are the uh, the the peaks and grooves on the key are they sharp or are they nice and dull and worn in? Uh, it is silver, so okay. I don't see any gold. Uh, I'm going to say it's pretty. They're pretty sharp. My mechanic, okay. he also did that. First thing he said, he oh. said, let me see the key. Okay, good. So we're on the same page then. So here's what I'm thinking is just what just what his thought was. Maybe you came in, you parked against the curb a little bit, you had the wheels turned, and you bound up that steering wheel lock a little bit. So just keep an eye on when you're parking. You know, when you go up and you think you might have bumped that parking curb in front of you, just back up a, just a, a couple inches, put the steering wheel straight, and, and then try that for a little while, and I bet you won't have any more problems. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dave, for coming in to help us help you with your car. And uh, you can find Dave Demon at davescarcareaz.com or at bumpertobumperradio.com. You can also check out the blog for the show at ktr.com. Homepage, go to shows, and you're going to find a blog. I usually do a couple blogs a month. So thanks, Brianna, for running the dials and hooking up some music. If you're looking for a great shop to start a relationship with, Bumper to BumperRadio.com. We'll see you next week. After 14 years in the States, mostly spent here in the Valley, I was getting bloody frustrated with the treatment I was receiving from dealerships on the maintenance and repairs of my vehicles. I finally reached out to a friend who told me I was crazy not to try Virginia Auto Service. Being a mom with a busy schedule, children, and work, I took my friend's advice and gave Virginia a try. What a refreshing difference. From the first step through their doors, their staff was accommodating and understanding. Robert explained in plain English what I needed to have done, but also why. They went out of their way to make sure that the experience was convenient with door-to-door shuttle service by a lovely man named Bergie. Several years and a number of visits later, the experience is always the same. They tell me what is necessary right now and what is not. This is Victoria, and I don't know much about cars, but I do know that from boot to bonnet, Virginia Auto Service knows how to take care of their customers. Check them out online at virginiaautoservice.com. Hi, I'm Scott, General Manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions, for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at tricitytransmission.com. Go where the pros go. Try City Transmission. Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Dave. We're the car guys from the Bumper to Bumper radio show heard right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR every Saturday from 11 to noon. Bumper to Bumper radio, it's just like your favorite warm and comfy blanket for all your automotive needs. (laughs) Yeah, I guess you're right, Dave. And we're here not just on Saturdays, but 24-7 at BumperToBumperRadio.com for all the very best repair and service shops in Phoenix. Yep, right advice, products and partners are all at Bumper to Bumper. BumperRadio.com.